Y'all, I'm a liar. I lied to you. Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. So I recently did a video about my honorable mentions for 2022. So these were books that didn't quite make my top of 2022 based on rating, but they were still such a solid and incredible reading experience. These are books that I still think about all the time. They take up space in my mind and it's because of that that I wanted to mention them to you. And in that video I said that that was likely going to be the final 2022 wrap up video. However, I lied because as I was editing that video I realized that of the seven books I talked about in that video, six of them were by authors that were new to me. So not necessarily debut authors, but authors I had never read from before. And six of them made it into the honorable mentions. And that got me thinking how many other new to me or debut authors did I read in 2022 that might deserve some more airtime. And here we are filming this video. So this will absolutely be the final 2022 wrap up video that I'm doing. And I promise that next year I'm going to try to plan these out a little bit better so that they are all done and finished in January so that I'm not still wrapping up 2022 in February. But I still thought that this was too good of an idea to pass up because apparently I found some incredible authors in 2022 that were so solid that I definitely want to continue with them in the future and I wanted to mention them here. I apologize for lying to y'all but without further ado let's go ahead and get into it. So the first author that I want to talk to you about today is Megan Golden. I started out with Night Swim. This was the very first book that I read by Megan Golden and I really enjoyed this overall. This actually follows a true crime podcaster who is very very popular. One of her true crime podcasts ended up help exonerating an innocent man and now she's heading to a small town. I think it might be in North Carolina to to cover an ongoing rape case. And so you're following her in the present as she's following that case. And so you're getting the podcast element in that regard, but you're also following the fact that she's being approached by somebody. She doesn't know who, but somebody is leaving notes on her car saying, I have this case that I want you to look into. And you find out that it is the sister of a woman who mysteriously died a couple of decades prior, but the sister doesn't believe that this was an accident or that her sister killed herself. She believes that there is more to it and she wants this podcaster's help. And it goes from there. I remember very much enjoying my reading experience. I loved all of the bits and pieces that went along with it. And Megan Golden has a new book coming out in 2023 that follows the same podcaster. So I'm hoping there are going to be like more podcast elements to that book as well. And I'm excited to dive in. I also ended up reading The Escape Room last year as well. It was okay overall. It was full of really unlikable characters and I didn't really necessarily connect with the story. I had a lot of technical issues with that story, but it was still fine. And I still decided to keep it on my shelf. And I definitely want to continue with Megan Golden as an author in the future. We'll see what my experience is with the newest release that she's putting out. And if I still want to continue but absolutely right now I am very excited to continue with her as an author. I absolutely could not make this video without talking about Lisa Jewell. Now Lisa Jewell in no way was a new author by the time I discovered her. I was very late to the Lisa Jewell game but I ended up reading three books in 2022 by Lisa Jewell because I just enjoyed her so much. The first book that I read was The Night She Disappeared. I read this earlier in 2022 and very very much enjoyed it. This follows a mother who is on babysitting duty. She is watching her grandson. Her daughter at only 19 years old now has a baby with her boyfriend and she is watching that baby but her daughter and her boyfriend never return. And you're following her desperate search to find out what happened to her daughter. You are also following that daughter in the months leading up to her disappearance. And so her perspective obviously ends up converging with her mother's perspective. And then you get another perspective about a year after the initial disappearance of the daughter and how it all converges and how it all works together. And I thought that this was twisty, not necessarily because it was like super shocking or there was that surprise ending, although there were a couple of little twists and turns here and there, but just because this was so well woven and it absolutely takes you on a ride. I do also want to spotlight. I found you because this is one that I sat down to read kind of randomly. I had nothing going on. I randomly selected this book from my TBR and I ended up binging through this in 24 hours. I found this absolutely compulsively readable. This follows our main character Alice. She is a single mom and one night she is out on the beach and she sees this man just there and he stays there. He has like no intention of moving. The weather is getting harsh and he just sits there and stays there and she kind of feels sorry for him. So she goes out there. I think she gives him a jacket if I remember correctly and she has no idea that this simple act of kindness is going to end up throwing her into this very unusual story because this man has amnesia. He doesn't know who he is, how he got there. And so Alice finds herself trying to help this man. Then you are also following another person in the same timeline in London. She's a newly minted resident of London. She comes from Eastern Europe and she is a newlywed, but one night her husband doesn't come home and she doesn't know what has happened to him. The police aren't really taking her seriously. They think that he's got like a side piece and that he might've run away, but she is determined to find out where her husband is because she knows that he wouldn't do that. So you're following her timeline and then you're actually following a timeline well in the past. You're following a brother and sister and something 
something that happened to them one summer. And then of course you find out how all of these timelines converge. And like I said, I thought that this was wonderfully well woven. I love when there are multiple timelines and you are wondering how they all connect and how they come together. And so I really enjoyed how Lisa Jewel was able to do it in this one. It was a little bit unexpected. It wasn't quite what I was thinking was going to happen. And like I said, I just found it compulsively readable and bingeable. This was such an enjoyable read and I've already planned to read more Lisa Jewel in the future. I already have a book on hold at the library that I want to read soon. So she is definitely one of the favorites that I discovered in 2022. Also, I should have mentioned this at the very beginning of this video, but because I just posted that honorable mentions video where a lot of the books were by new to me or debut authors, I'm not going to be talking about those here. I'm also not going to be talking about any new to me or debut authors that I featured in my best books of 2022. So if you are interested in more of my thoughts on The Overnight Guest by Heather Gutenkopf, The Collective by Allison Galen, Firstborn by Will Dean, Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan, A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead, which made my top books of 2022 as did Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Please be sure to check out those two separate videos down below for more of my thoughts and feelings on those authors. Obviously I loved them very much if they made them into the top or the honorable mentions videos. I will definitely be continuing with them as authors in the future, but I didn't want to go ahead and duplicate that here. So if you're interested in more of my thoughts on those books or those authors, please check out those two videos, which will be linked down below. Another standout author that I'm linked to the game on, but just discovered in 2022, Jennifer Hillier. So this wasn't actually the first Jennifer Hillier book that I read. The first book that I read was The Butcher. And it was that book that absolutely blew me away. It made me want to continue with Jennifer Hillier in the future because there was a major twist that happened by the end of the first chapter. And it actually had me caught so off guard that I was hooked. I was in it. And that was another bingeable, compulsively readable book. And so that absolutely made me want to continue with her. And so when this became a book of the month selection last year, I had to go ahead and jump on it. So this follows our main character, Paris Peralta. And at the very start of the story, you find out that she's being arrested for her husband's murder. Her husband is found dead in the bathtub. Paris is there at the scene of the crime. She's kind of holding the murder weapon in her hand and she is being arrested. But what bothers her more than the fact that she's being arrested for a crime that she didn't commit and that her husband is dead is the fact that she knows this is going to get a lot of publicity because her husband, who was a lot older than she was, was actually a very famous comedian. And so she knows that this is going to get a lot of spotlight, which she does not want because she believes that things from her past are going to be uncovered and they eventually do. Going along with that, you find out that Paris Peralta is kind of being blackmailed by Ruby Reyes. Ruby Reyes is known as the Ice Queen because 25 years earlier, she brutally killed her husband with the blade of an ice skate. And she knows who Paris Peralta is. And she is willing to keep quiet if Paris pays her money. So you're following all of that. Then of course, you're following a past timeline. You're following a separate character and what that separate character goes through, but you don't know how that character connects with Paris or the present day timeline. And of course, it all gets woven together. This is another one of those stories where there are multiple perspectives, multiple timelines, and you're just waiting for that ball to drop. You're waiting to see how it all connects. I enjoyed The Butcher more than this, in all honesty, but it was still a really strong suspense thriller. And I am hyped to read more from Jennifer Hillier in the future. She is another author that I do plan on reading in 2023. I have already another book lined up to read, Jar of Hearts, which is one that I hear almost nothing but praise about. I hear it's one of her strongest novels ever. So I am definitely on the hype train with Jennifer Hillier. Super excited to read more from her. I also actually discovered two very strong legal thriller writers in 2022. The first I want to talk about is Steve Cavanaugh. So you actually might already know Steve Cavanaugh's name because a book of his called 13 is really popular in the online bookish community. And that is actually book, I want to say number four in this same series that starts with the plea and it follows our main character Eddie Flynn and Eddie Flynn kind of grew up a con artist and he eventually wanted to go on the straight and narrow and decided to use his skills to become a defense attorney because oddly enough you can use a lot of the skills that you got as a con artist as a defense attorney but at the start of this book he is not really practicing anymore he's very down on his luck he's on the outs with his wife and like I said he's not practicing law because of something kind of traumatic that happened to him I think it was like a year prior he's kind of lost faith in his profession but then one day his daughter ends up being kidnapped by the head of the Russian mob and Eddie Flynn is being blackmailed into helping defend this person, try to get off from the crimes that he has committed. And of course, throughout the story, you're finding out why Eddie Flynn specifically was chosen. And you're finding out how Eddie Flynn is going to get out of this and how he's going to try to save his daughter. Eddie Flynn's books so far, I've only read two. I've only read this one and The Defense, which is book two. These are very high octane legal thrillers, which is typically not my thing. You know, I'm a very character driven reader. I like that more slow, detailed story so I can more connect to the characters. But these ones just work so very well because you just want to keep turning the page. You want to know what happens. You might not necessarily be emotionally connected to it, but these are books that are going to get your heart pounding. They're going to keep you on the edge of your seat. And I feel like that is good enough for me to consider these very, very well written stories. This one takes place, if I remember correctly, in just a time frame, like just over a day. And it's the same with the defense. These take place over a very short window of time as Eddie Flynn is trying to maneuver himself out of the situations that he finds himself in. And I totally just realized that I'm holding the wrong book, y'all. Plea is the second book and the defense is the first book. <laughs> Chaos. 
I mean, what, what, this is what happens when I don't prep for a video. This is exactly what happens. But anyway, the moral of the story is if you like legal thrillers, please give Steve Cavanaugh a try. It is well worth it. The other strong legal thriller author that I want to mention is Victor Methos. I read A Killer's Wife last year. And again, this was another bingeable, compulsively readable story. So when you're first reading the synopsis of this, it sounds kind of familiar. You know, it's about a woman who discovers that her wife is a serial killer, yada, yada, yada. We've seen it before. In this instance, that main character is Jess Yardley. And she basically used the trauma of her past to become a very renowned federal prosecutor. And she's also raising the child that came from that unholy union. But now there is a new serial killer out there, one whose MO is very, very similar to that of her ex-husband. And so she's being asked to help with this case. She's being asked to go talk to her ex-husband who she hasn't talked to since he was thrown in jail many, many years before because they think that she can get insight on who this killer is. Like, is he a copycat? Is it somebody that her husband might be working with? Nobody knows. And Jess Yardley is being asked to go and do this. And yes, in some ways, this is very, very, very predictable. I think that any experienced mystery thriller reader is pretty much going to know who the perpetrator is the first time that they come on the page. But this really isn't about the whodunit. It is really more about the journey and then what comes afterwards. It's about the legal side, the courtroom drama, the adversarial nature of our criminal justice system. It is about who is better and who is more skilled in the courtroom. Who can manipulate the facts to suit their purposes? Who can win this game, this art, and prove to the jury that they are right or that they deserve to either have their client convicted or let go? It has a lot of great back and forth. It has a lot of legal loopholes. It was just so much legal maneuvering in this, which I really, really enjoyed. And then of course, there's another layer here because Jess Yardley has a daughter, a product of her marriage to the serial killer. And this guy has never actually met his daughter. And he's kind of using that as a blackmailing chip. Like I will not help you unless you let me talk to my daughter. And so that is a whole nother aspect of this story. So ultimately very fast paced, bingeable, very well done. Love the courtroom drama, love the legal maneuvering. There was just so much that was strong about this story. And I'm excited to read more in this series. This has another one or two books at least, and I'm excited to continue in this and just with Victor Methos in general in the future. A.R. Tori is another author that I'm excited to continue with in 2023. I read Every Last Secret and very, very much enjoyed this one. This is basically rich people behaving badly. Our main character, Kat Winthrop, is a very gorgeous, privileged person. She has a very enviable life. She's married to a man that everybody else wants. He's a successful entrepreneur. She helps him with his businesses and she has her own things going as well. They live in this very affluent neighborhood in the Bay Area of California. And then one day they get neighbors that they weren't expecting. And this neighbor is actually somebody that Kat's husband has hired to work in his practice. But as soon as Kat meets Dr. Nina Ryder, she does not like her. She knows that there is something more to Nina and she kind of fears that Nina is going to try to go after her husband. And so you're following this back and forth between Kat and Nina. Nina definitely has ulterior motives. She came from nothing. She didn't have the privileged background as Kat does. And so she's kind of scraped and clawed her way to where she is now. She married her current husband directly out of high school because she was desperate to get away from her hometown and her father. And they seem to have a very loving relationship, but Nina has always wanted more and she's going to do everything that she possibly can to get more. And so you're following the dynamics between the two. You're following what they are doing to get what they want. And it was just, it was just delicious. It was a popcorn thriller. Really enjoyed my reading experience of this. And I'm super excited to read more from A.R. Tori in the future. I definitely plan to get to at least one more of her books in 2023. And then the final author that I want to talk to you about today, El Casamano. I read Finley Donovan is Killing It. It was either in November or December. And this was just such a good time. It follows our main character, Finley Donovan, and she is a struggling writer. And she's actually struggling in many, many areas areas of her life. Her marriage just recently ended because her husband was having an affair. So she's having to take care of the children and the house on her own. Also with these struggling finances, she's having to deal with the fact that her husband is now getting married to somebody else. And of course her husband has actually fired the nanny that they were paying for, which adds just further complications to their lives. And one day Finley is out talking with her literary agent and she's going over the plot of her new suspense. I think she writes suspense romance. And so she's talking to her literary agent about this plot and that combined with some other convenient circumstances leads to the person who was sitting next to their table to believe that Finley Donovan is actually a contract killer. And so she discreetly gets Finley Donovan's attention and says, my husband is a bad man and he needs to die and I want you to do it. And Finley is trying to tell her, I'm not who you think I am, but this person is not having it. And so curious and also needing the cash, Finley Donovan actually goes to where she knows this guy is going to be just to see if he really is as terrible as his wife thinks that she is. And it kind of goes from there. So obviously this is not meant to be taken too terribly seriously. It is a very, very good time. But yet at the same time, I really felt like El Casamano did a great job job of making this seem somewhat plausible. Do I believe that a contract killer would be out in a Panera Bread openly discussing their work? No, absolutely not. But some of the other circumstances
circumstances that led to the conclusions of this person who was hiring Finley did seem plausible. And some of the other situations just felt kind of believable if all of the circumstances aligned very right. And then of course shenanigans ensue when Finley is out trying to investigate this husband. And this was just a good wild time. So I will certainly be continuing with El Casamano in the future. And if you have not read Finley Donovan is Killing It and you are looking for a good time, definitely recommend. All right, y'all. So those are some of the debut or new to me authors that I discovered in 2022 that I very much enjoyed and plan to continue with going forward. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these authors and if you agree that you enjoy them. And let me also know some of the authors that you discovered in 2022 that you had not yet read before. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos two times a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and I have something to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.